This conference will now be recorded. God bless your heart. Just another day that the Lord has blessed me. It's another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with my mind stead on thee. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. I'm so glad the Lord has kept me. I'm so glad the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with my mind stead on Jesus. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Thank you, Lord. Our Father and our God, we come to say thank you. We thank you once again for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Oh God, we realize that we may not sing like angels nor preach like Paul, but one thing we do know that we have the love of Jesus and we can declare that he died for all. We thank you, oh God, for this opportunity, this golden opportunity to come before the throne of grace one more time. Oh God, we come just to give you praise. Oh God, we praise you for all that you have already done. Lord, if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. And Lord, we say thank you. Then we worship you for who you are, oh God. There's none like you. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You have all power in your hand. You are creator of heaven and earth. So we worship you, oh God. We thank you for those who are on the line tonight, those who thought it not robbery to come together for a little while, for an hour of prayer, for the time of, of study, oh God. Your people, we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Oh, God, now we enter your gates and into your courts with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. Oh, God, we thank you for who you are. And because of who you are, we'll give you praise. We thank you for the first prayer tonight. We thank you for the first song. We thank you for the reading of scriptures. We thank you for testimony of what great things the Lord have done. Oh, God, we don't know about the absent part, but we pray that you will remember the absent part this evening. Oh, God, we thank you for bringing us, as the songwriter said, through many dangers, toils and snares, we've already come, but it was grace that brought us safe this far, and grace will lead us home. So, Lord, we praise you tonight. Then, Father, we pray that your will be done. None of me, but all of the use me. Speak to me as a vessel, O oh God. Let your words go forth with clarity, with conviction, O oh God, with teaching power that, O oh God, we don't just become hearers of the word, but we become doers. Show us thy way and lead us in the clean and plain path and we be mindful to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you this evening. Good to see each and every one. Amen. Those that's on the line tonight, good to hear your voice. Hey, those that's on the phones tonight, amen. We greet you with, amen, Jesus' joy. We, we got the love of Jesus. We have the love of Jesus in our hearts tonight, amen. And God's word is in our heart that we may not sin against his word. So we thank you for all those here tonight, those that's on the way, amen. And remember the absent part. Before we go any further, we just want to recognize, give honor to whom uh, honor is due. Uh, we want to recognize all our clergy, amen, of the Greater Central Baptist Church, our minister, Patricia Graham, our minister, Julia Hayes, our evangelist, Evelina Cooper, amen, to our deacon, our chairman, uh, Deacon Bryan has been said that we don't know why he's not online, but we'll keep him in prayer. Amen. You know, you have all kinds of difficulties nowadays. And so we keep him in prayer. And all the deacons, I was blessed, amen, to be in their presence on yesterday. God bless you. And we was out doing our father's business, amen, about our father's business to all our uh, deaconesses and our missionaries, our mother's ministry. We thank you, each and every one, our trustees, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to all those that's visiting with us, our sisters and brothers in Christ, amen. Amen, after this pandemic, I believe somebody may come running and want to come running down the aisles and cry out, what must I do to be saved? Or I wanna become a part of this, the Greater Central Baptist Church family. So we do thank God for all those who support us physically, uh, spiritually, prayerfully, and as well as financially. We do thank God for all the many fold blessings that 
have come our way in spite of the season of uh, COVID-19 we find ourselves in. Uh, and we want to say thank you. Just a brief announcement uh, that uh, we were with our sister Yvonne Johnson, the deacons and I on yesterday, uh, had an opportunity to pray with her, encourage her, comfort her heart in the transition on her, of her mother, Mother Eva, Eva Johnson. Amen. And she was able to travel safely. She called me uh, a little while ago. She traveled down safely to Beaufort, South Carolina. She made it safe. And she'll be there on October the 1st, which is Thursday. Uh, they'll have a viewing. Amen. And then on Friday morning, she will lay mother to rest. Amen. In the National Cemetery there. So we're going to just keep Sister Johnson. You know, she's just so faithful down through the years just quiet and just dutiful and faithful to the greatest Central Baptist Church, but more importantly to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it's her time now. We don't know when our time will come. We don't want to keep you long tonight because I know some of you want to uh, get to the bit to see the debate. <laughs> Amen. The great debate is already settled in my mind, but nevertheless, we want to hear uh, what Mr. Biden have to say, our, our, uh, Vice President, former Vice President, Mr. Biden. I'm more interested uh, than what he has to say than, than what our president has to say, because you know it, his heart and his mind is in two different places. So uh, we are still uh, duty bound to pray for civil government. So just be mindful of that. As long as they still have rule over us, we got to pray for them, that the Lord would even just touch their hearts. Amen. You know, if your heart get right, then your mind will get right. If your mind would get right, then your speech, your tongue would get right. So we pray that the Lord would touch uh, Donald Trump's heart. Amen. Amen. That he'll really have a heart for the people. So tonight, also before we go any further, once again, I want to thank my friend and my brother, uh, Reverend Keith Dennis. Amen. Of the St. Luke Baptist Church. Amen. He is a, 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 a excellent teacher. He is a friend indeed, a colleague at the Minister's Conference. I can depend on him, amen. He's a, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and his excellent teacher, Dr. the late Dr. J.G. McCann, amen. His spirit is rest upon him. So I appreciate our brother, uh, Reverend uh, Keith Dennis and we're gonna be, he, he don't mind working along with us. And he's a fellow servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you had a blessed Bible study from the re review and report I had. He know how to rightly divide the word of God. So we thank God. We also thank God for our, our church class on on Saturday morning. It is going pretty good. We had good attendance on the last two Saturdays. So come back out and join us this coming Saturday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Amen. Uh, we'll share the word of God with you out of the book of Samuel. Amen. Amen. Hey, talking about Jonathan and David. Amen. What a friend to have. But tonight, amen, we're still in the book of Psalms. Amen. I pray that these studies have been a blessing to you. Amen. We're still in the Bible and we're still studying the Psalms. Amen. So material that you're going to need, I will always say, bring your Bible to Bible study. Amen. Amen. We have a book, a commentary, but this is the commentary. This is the book. So always bring your Bible to Bible study. And I always say to you, bring a little highlighter. Amen. I give you some reference scriptures as we go through the Bible. Amen. So have a little highlight, highlight in this, the book we'll be studying out of, Be Worshipful. Uh, Warren Warsby, if you desire the book, you can download it, as well as you can also come by the church. We have some extra books. You come by on Friday. We're there between 11 and 3. Mostly every Friday, you can pick up a book, of course, at $10. Amen. So tonight, amen, we want to go into the word of God. Amen. And we're going to be studying Psalms 22. Psalms 22. Uh, it's a little lengthy in reading tonight. Amen. But I always like to read the, from the word of God and then we can go from there. For those of you who have your Bible, let's open up to Psalm 22. Amen. And we'll read and then we'll go from there. Amen. It says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not in the night season and and am not silent, but thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitants of the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. 
but I am a worm and no man and no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out of the lip, they shake their heads saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, that didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouth as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture be not but be not thou far from me o lord O my strength haste thee to help me deliver my soul from the sword my darling from the power of the dog save me from the lion's mouth for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn verse 22 says i would declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will i praise thee yea that ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him, all ye the seeds of Israel. For he hath not despised nor heard the affliction of the afflicted, neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied they shall praise the lord that seek him your heart shall live forever all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the lord and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee for the kingdom is the lord's and he is the governor among the nation all they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship all they that go down to the dust shall bow before him and none can keep alive his own soul look at that a seed shall serve him. It shall be it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. Verse 31 says, they shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Glory be to God. Put it in tonight and we look at our lesson. I just have a few words of introduction and we'll go to, into our study book. We're going to talk about Psalms 22. Amen. This psalm was another psalm that's written by David. Amen. Give God praise uh, for David. He, he's a writer of over 70 of the psalms, 70 plus of the psalms, because there's some that's still uh, uh, unidentified but have been attributed to David. Of the 150 psalms, he written about almost 60, 65 percent of the psalms. Amen. Uh, it's a song that was addressed to the chief musician according to the tune it was supposed to be sung in. It's uh, uh, it's the fifth messianic song. When they mean messianic, talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, written and is also in the form of a fervent prayer of lament. Uh, this song speaks of David's own distress and the Lord's deliverance. But when it occurred, uh, and that's what happens with this psalm. It talks about David's own uh, uh, distress, but when it occurred, it kind of difficult to pinpoint when it occurred in his life, amen? Uh, was it while he was being pursued by Saul? Was it the time that uh, he had problems with Absalom? Was it a time when he had grown old, amen? And the, the people of some of the people of Israel, amen, even his own surrounding enemies uh, thought it uh, uh, that he was in a situation that he couldn't help himself and where, where is his God that he talked about? So the time frame of this writing is still uncertain. 
Amen. But we know that David wrote it. But it also, when you look at this psalm, uh, it, uh, it proph prophetically describes in detail our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's talking about his crucifixion and his resurrection. Amen. Not only is David a poet, not only is he a musician, not only was he a, a warrior, but David was also a prophet. Okay, so when you look at the Old Testament, brothers and sisters, all the majority of the Old, all Old Testament writing, it really revealed Christ. Amen. A lot of the prophets talked about Christ, revealed him that he was one to come. Amen. So the Old Testament is Christ uh, revealed. But the New Testament is Christ fulfilled. Amen. So the things that they wrote about, what they, uh, what was spiritually revealed to them in the New Testament, it came to pass. So Christ was revealed in the old and fulfilled in the new. Uh, he said in John, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I come to what? To fulfill the law. Amen. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. So this psalm car carries us from a great uh, from great suffering to great joy. When you look at the beginning of this psalm to the end of the psalm, uh, I believe from Psalm from verse one through verse twenty-one is talks about a great deal of suffering. Amen. That David uh, uh, was dealing with at that time, or he was prophetically writing about Christ. We're going to see that in our lesson tonight. But also from verses twenty-two down to thirty-one, it switches and it talks about a great deal of joy that will come uh, despite rejection by friends and it seemed like god also was rejecting them but david believed that god would lead him out of despair and before we even get into this word i was doing some study some final study today and there's a scripture i just want to highlight before i get started i don't know why i'm going there but those who have your bibles and it's a very uh a familiar verse of scripture. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 4 and verses 8 and 9. If you have your Bible, your highlight, this is a highlight verse. 2 Corinthians. Amen. Chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Amen. Because this is kind of like highlighting what this uh, lesson is about and also to make it relevant, what you and I will go to what, as believers in Christ, what we have to endure. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses eight and nine. The apostle Paul says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. So whatever we face as followers of Christ, as believers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as disciples, I don't care what the situation, what the circumstance, what it looked like, uh, we are more than conquerors. Amen. That's all I want to let you know. Sometimes we're looking and our situation is very dire, very distressed. Amen. It would cause us to be uh, perplexed. How are we going to get out of this situation? Amen. Lord, we've been calling trouble. You know, it starts out by saying, which Everywhere you look around, there's trouble. Trouble on every side. You go to your friends, they got trouble too. So if you think about it, uh, uh, some of the circumstances we find ourselves in life, you really need to have the Lord on your side. That where hope, that's where hope comes in. That's where your faith is activated. Amen. Uh, so in my introduction, I want to let you know that uh, in this Psalms 22, David gives an accurate description of the suffering of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, uh, how he would endure hundreds of years later, some of the, 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 the sufferings and the, 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 um, the despair and the, the battles that Christ would have to endure with years later. You know, Jesus came through the genealogy line of our Lord, of David. Amen. That's why when they recognize Jesus in his day, they say, thou son of David. So it's, it's, it's amazing how uh, prophetically uh, people can speak things into existence. And I often say uh, in the congregation, I often remind you, we didn't arrive on our own. Amen. The things that we have and the things that we have accomplished, 
don't thank it just because of you. Thank God God gave you the opportunity, but somebody prayed for you. Somebody prophetically spoke things into it, the atmosphere. And they may be off the scene, but the things that they spoke, God had honored. That's what I'm trying to say. God had honored their words, honored their requests. Amen. And so a lot of in this psalm, things were prophetically uh, spoken by David. David was enduring some great trials. But through his suffering, like the Messiah, uh, was able to come to gain great victory. David suffering, amen, was a typology. When we say typology, we're talking about something that was similar or, or parallel to Christ. Amen. When you look at this psalm, a lot of things that David was writing about, uh, listen, Christ endured. Typology, amen. Uh, also, who was another Christian biblical character was typology of Christ? Uh, Joseph, we've been in the study of Joseph, right, in the uh, Sunday school uh, lesson, our, our church school lesson, right? Typology of Christ. What do you mean? Well, Joseph, just like his brother, like, like Jesus, um, uh, was betrayed or sold for 30. Joseph had 20 pieces, Christ 30 pieces of silver. Joseph, just like Jesus, amen, was despised by his own brethren, was not received by his own brethren. Uh, Joseph, just like Jesus, was put down in a pit. Joseph in a, a physical pit, Jesus in the grave. But amen, he rose, he resurrected, he reigned, amen. Uh, not only that, uh, Jonah was another typology of Christ. He was buried for three days. And that grave, that, that great fish represents the, the grave. But the third day, he was, amen, uh, resurrected, spread out on dry, dry, the typology, amen. So let's go into our lesson book real quick. Uh, tonight, we're on page uh, 90. Uh, we probably won't get through all of this, but we'll read the most that we can. Uh, and then we'll make some interjections here from uh, on page 90, the first paragraph says Psalms 22, 23, and 24 form a tri trilogy on Christ the shepherd. Uh, the good shepherd dies for the sheep. Uh, the great shepherd lives for the sheep and cares for them. And in, and in uh, 24, the sheep shepherd returns in glory to reward his sheep for their service. Ajita, Shaha, is interpretation to mean the doe or the hound, hind of the morning or help or at daybreak. It may have been the name of the tune to which this psalm was sung. David is the author, but we have a difficult time finding an occasion in, in his life that would call forth this kind of psalm. According to the record, the Lord never deserted him in his hour of need, but always provided friends to help him and, and deliverance from his enemy. The intense suffering described here isn't that of a sick man in bed or a soldier in battle. It's a description of a criminal being executed. Numerous quotations from the psalm in the four gospel, as well as uh, Hebrews 2, uh, 10 through uh, 12, indicate that this is a messianic psalm. Amen. We may not know how this psalm related to the author personal experience, but we do know that David was a prophet. Amen. And you read Acts uh, 2 and 30. They recognize him. The apostles recognized David as a, a, a prophet. In this psalm, he wrote about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The first part, verses 1 through 21, focuses on prayer and suffering and takes us to the cross, while the second part, 22 to 31, announces the resurrection and expresses the praise to the glory of God. An understanding of the Messiah's suffering and glory is basic to gasping the message of the, of the Bible. Amen. We will try to see both David and the son of David as we study this psalm. Uh, I'm going to enter it, and then I have some notes I want to share with you. But I'll read this section, Prayer in a Time of Suffering. There were three burdens that moved David to pray for God's help, and they applied to Jesus as well. He was abandoned by the Lord. That's verses 1 through 5. The opening words of the psalm immediately, immediately transports, transports us to Calvary, for Jesus quoted them at the close of a three-hour period of darkness. I am not alone, Jesus told his disciples, because the Father is with me. 
And yet he cried out that the Lord had forsaken him. When he spoke these words, he had been engaged in a mysterious transaction with the Father, dying for the sins of the world. On the cross, Jesus was made sin and, and made a curse for us. In some in, in, inexplicable way, he experienced what condemned lost sinners experienced away from the presence of the Lord. Uh, however, note that both David and Jesus called him my God, making it clear that they were still they still knew and trusted the Father. This was not a cry of complaining of a complaining servant, but of the sob of a broken-hearted child asking, Where is my father when I need him? As David, as David prayed for help, he wondered why God didn't answer him. After all, he was a God of compassion who was concerned about his people. He was a, a holy God who practiced justice. Even more, Israel was God's special covenant nation. He was enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Only Israel had God's divine law and could worship him in a way acceptable to him. Many times in the past, the Lord had kept his covenant promise to Israel and fought battles. So why was he distant now? Compassion, justice, and the sacred covenant were strong arguments for God's intervention, but he was silent. Amen. Uh, and when we're looking at verse number one. Do you have your Bibles here? We're going to look at verse number one. Look at what verse number one says in Psalm 22 and verse one. It says here, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Amen. Amen. And so sometimes you feel that way. All the praying that you do. Amen. It, this was not a cry of doubt, but an urgent appeal to God. Amen. Uh, it was, these were words uttered by even Jesus Christ, our Lord himself on the cross. Here's the next, here's the uh, next reference scripture. Let's turn to St. Matthew chapter 27 and verses 46. Matthew 27 and 46, you will find these words, amen, uttered by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ while on the cross, dying for our sins. Verse 46 reads this, uh, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Sabbathai, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. What God was looking when he saw Christ, as our lesson said, he saw sin. Amen. He saw the curse of sin and God cannot uh, deal with sin. Amen. But Jesus came to bore our sins. Amen. But it was for a light moment. Amen. He bore the sin of the whole world amen he died for our sin and so uh when we see these words and we always find in other uh, uh verses in the psalms uh psalm number 10 psalm 17 david is still crying out to the lord whatever is the circumstance lord i need you right now that's what david is saying why i'm praying lord i i, I I'm, I'm petitioning you lord and i need you right now uh, verses two through five is David's own personal experience he was dealing with. And it says here in verse two, look at verse two in this, in our lesson. Uh, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and I am not silent, am not silent. Amen. Have you ever felt that way? You know, we used to sing some of the hymns or the prayer. That's why it's good to come to prayer service. You, 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 experience some songs amen that uh showed an expression of a people who were waiting on the lord amen and i remember one of the songs that i was a little boy they used to sing they said i prayed and i prayed i prayed all night long i prayed and i prayed until i found the lord my soul just couldn't rest contented until i found the lord amen so sometimes we petitioning to god we're serving god we're giving our tithes we're doing everything that the lord have required to do, do justly, love mercy, walking humbly with God, loving your, your neighbor, loving your enemy. And then when trouble come, amen, in your life, whether it be physical trouble, financial trouble, family problems, amen, problem on the job. When trouble come in your life and you call to the Savior who says that he will never leave you nor forsake you and you expect an urgent response, amen. What happens when God does not, uh, respond when you think he, he ought to respond amen so this was the type of cry 
uh, this is the type of scenario that David was experiencing. Lord, I, I cry to you, but yet I don't hear you. I, I don't hear, I don't see no signs of you. where are you, Lord? Amen. Uh, but look at verse three. Look at what it says in verse three. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabit the praises of Israel. Amen. But look at verse three. But thou art holy. This is the right attitude to have toward God. Even if he don't answer you when you think he ought to answer you. Even if he don't show up when he spoke, you think he ought to show up. Uh, this is still the right attitude as a believer that we ought to have in God. This, uh, but thou art holy. Amen. God, whatever you do, however you work it out, it's going to be all right. Even if your prayer is not heard or answered on this side of the grave, you still ought to trust God. Amen. Men should refrain from charging God if, if our prayers are not answered. Let me say that again. We should refrain, refrain from charging God if your prayers you think should not have not been answered when you think they should have been answered. Amen. But we still have to trust God throughout all our circumstances. Let's look at verse five. Amen. Uh, and, I, and I think this is a good verse here to look at. And we'll move on. It says, uh, verse four and five says, our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. Amen. You know. Uh, uh, David used the record of what God had already done for his people in his prayer. That's what this is about. In his prayer, he called himself reminding God, God, what you have already done for your people, your covenant people, your chosen people, your royal priesthood people, my fathers before me. And he called himself uh, 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 including that in his prayer. And I, and I say to you, it's all right to, amen, include things what the Lord had already done, how he had already showed himself mighty. Uh, it's all right to remind God in your uh, in your prayer to God or to recall to him what he's already done. Remind him. It's all right to quote his promises and his powers. Amen. And so one of the scriptures I pulled up, uh, Exodus. Let's go to Exodus in the Old Testament, chapter number two. Amen. Some people don't think that God don't hear you cry. Amen. So I found a scripture here and this is an old, this is what, this is what David was referring to. Lord, these people called on you and you delivered them. Exodus uh, chapter number two and verses 23 through 25. This is what, this is what David, what these verses are in reference to here. Look what he, David was really saying. He, he would keep probably quoted this one uh, from the Torah and it says, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Israel died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage and God heard their groanings and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob and God looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them then if you look down to verse, chapter number three and verse uh seven through uh nine yeah chapter three verse seven through nine look what i'm just continuing to follow up and the lord said i have or i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and have what heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good land and uh, a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. So it's not that, uh, this lets you know that God hears, that's why I use that reference, to let you know that God will hear Amen. Not only will he hear our prayer, but he will answer our prayer. And the old same part of that verse of song said, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. 400 years, they was in bondage, but God showed up. Amen. Right on time. Amen. So I just want to let you know, David let us know that he just took God way back. You don't have to take him back. God already knows, but that's what David did. So God had 
can answer your prayer. Amen. Look at uh, verse six. Uh, let's look at verse six. He says, but I am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despise of the people. He says, all they that see me laugh, meet the scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake their head, saying, amen. All right. And so uh, uh, a worm was basically, he was saying, a feeling of being in a low estate. When you feel worthless, uh, defenseless, treated with utter contempt. Amen. A worm, amen. You look at the little, creature the worm amen so defenseless amen you can pick it up you can shake it you can step on it amen that's the exposed type of exposure that he was talking about he didn't have he felt as though he didn't have no protection amen and whatever the enemy was able to do or might wanted to do he felt as though he was there by himself amen we used to sing a song we still sing that song at the cross amen you know the certain part of the hymn it says at last and did my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for what so, for such a worm as I. In other words, you take the humble approach, the the, the approach in which uh, if the Lord don't do it, 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 it can't be done. Amen. So we took the humble approach. Amen. So he was despised. That's what he was saying. Uh, and he was despised topology as Christ was despised. Let's look with me to the book of Isaiah. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 53 and verses one through four amen a lot of things that david is quoting is still in reference prophetically to what christ will experience so in isaiah chapter 53 and verses one through four look what isaiah the prophet said about christ amen prophetically he says who shall who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed he's talking about christ now he for, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we were our faces from him. He was despised. Amen. And we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was what? Wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are here. See what all Christ had to do for us on the cross? And everything is pointing back to the cross. I just quoted to you uh, the first one. Uh, Matthew 27, 46, amen. When he cried out on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. This is all pointed to Christ by through Isaiah. Amen. Let's go back to our book real quick and I'll pick up as we go. Uh, let's go back to our a commentary book. Uh, he was despised by his people. So verses six through 11, we're going to the second paragraph. We're back in the book here, page 91. These words, especially applied to our savior, I am a worm and not a man, is a forgotten I am statement that speaks of how little value the leaders of Israel and the Roman official placed on Jesus of Nazareth. A worm is a creature of the ground, helpless, frail and unwanted. Isaiah 52, 14 predicted that the, that Messiah would be terribly disfigured, amen, by his enemies and not even look human. Uh, we quoted that from Isaiah 53 as well. And for reproach, uh, for the fulfillment. Amen. David reminded the Lord that from birth he had cared for him. So why abandon him now? David had learned to trust in the Lord, hope from infancy, and was not going to relent now. Trust is used three times in verses four through five, also in verse number eight. Let's read number three. He was condemned by the Lord. David looked around and saw his enemy. And so brutal were they that he compared them to animals, bulls, lions, amen, and, and, and dogs. For Sean was a very fertile area east of the Sea of Galilee and north of the Yarmouk River to Mount Hermon, now known as the Golan Heights. 
Amen. Uh, the wild bulls encircled their prey, then moved in for the kill. The dogs was ravaging savage wild dogs that lived in the garbage dumps and traveled in packs looking for victims. The people involved in arresting and condemning Jesus were only beasts attacking their creator. Attacking their creator, yes. Then David looked within and, and saw himself, and the description is surely that of a man being crucified. He is stripped of his clothing, placed on the cross, and nails are driven through his hands and feet. As he hangs between heaven and earth, his body is dehydrated, intense thirst. Uh, thirst takes over, and the end of it all is in the dust of, de of death. Uh, like ebbing water and melting wax, his strength fades away. He becomes like a brittle piece of broken pottery. Uh, for the application to Jesus, see, okay. Uh, it's remarkable that David should describe crucifixion because it was not a Jewish means of capital punishment. It's a, un, it's unlikely that he ever saw it occur. David, the prophetic psalmist, saw what would happen to the Messiah centuries later. Finally, David looked up to the Lord and prayed one more time for a strength he needed. In verse one, he mentioned that God was far from helping him. And he repeated this in verse 11, but he asked a third time for the God to come near and intervene. The sword in verse 20 may refer to the authority of Roman government, for it was Pilate who authorized Christ's death. A darling in verse 20 means my only one, as an only child, and refers to the one and only life that David possessed. Once lost, it could not be regained. We may translate verse 21, save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen have, you have delivered me, you have heard me in verse two. And he wrote that God had not answered, but now he almost shouts, you have answered me. This is the turning point of the psalm, amen. And uh, as we go forth, I just wanna look, let's go, I'd have some, uh, some commentary here uh, on verse seven and eight. If you look in our Bible, look at verse seven and eight. Uh, he said, save yourself. Let's look at verse seven and eight. All that see me laugh me to scorn, they shout out the lip, they shake their heads. He's trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Uh, that's what they're saying in verse number seven and eight, basically saying, save yourself. Uh, he was being reviled by people. Then if you look in our reference scripture, that's the same thing they said to Jesus, amen. Turn with me to Matthew 27 chapter, Matthew and verses 42 through 43. In your Bible, this is, we've heard it before. Let's look at what it says in our Bibles. Matthew 27, verses 42 to 43, while Jesus was on the cross, amen? Look at verse 42, it says, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will sit, have him, for he said, I am the son of God, amen. So the people was kind of rallying, you know, uh, ridiculing him while he was on the cross. And people will ridicule you too while you're going through your sacrifice. Be careful how you uh, promote yourself to be a, a child of God, going around talking about I'm a Christian, because you're gonna have to prove that one day, amen. Amen, it's better for you to live the life that someone can say, there goes a Christian, then for you to go around telling people that I am a Christian, amen? Because people are watching you, amen? Just like they were watching Christ on the cross. If you be the king of the Jews, who has come down and save even the thieves, amen? One of them said, save us, if save yourself and save us as well. And so he doesn't have to come down because Christ was on a mission to save the world. He could not come down to save him. He decided to what? To die to save you and I, amen? And so look at verse nine with me. Verse nine says, uh, but thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. Amen. They cast upon me from the womb that uh, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Amen. He was serving the Lord. Amen. That's what David was saying. He came into the world serving the Lord. But uh, this verse nine, reveals the father and son relationship between God and 
his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, from the womb. Amen. God was with him when he was in uh, Mary's womb. Amen. He was the spirit was there when uh, when the spirit said, thou uh, which shall uh, uh, bring forth shall be of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that was God's son. Amen. The Lord was with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if we look at our lives and analyze our lives, amen, you can kind of identify what David was saying that God had truly been with you. Amen. We wasn't born perfect. We was born in sin and shaping into iniquity. But when you look back, sometimes you need to do that now. Look back over your life and see how the Lord had his hand upon your life. You got out of the path. All of us had got out of the path one way or the other. But God's hand was still upon us. Amen. And he had kept us. And you're so grateful for that. Verse 11 uh, proves, it says here that, uh, be not far from me for trouble is near for there is none to help verse 11 proves Christians was alone Christ was alone in his his work and no human effort could save him amen uh, verse 12 the strong bulls of Bashan symbolizes the headstrong rulers of Israel who were determined to destroy the Messiah uh, you know at his birth Herod was determined to kill him Amen. And then you had the chief priests and the Pharisees, amen, and all those that wanted to stop Christ. They was always determined to stop the ministry, amen. Somebody said you can kill a, the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. You can't stop the dream, amen. So people were always against them, trying to, and there was no human effort. There was no human army. There was no individual that could come to your rescue but the Lord, amen. That's why you have to learn to look and depend on the Lord. Some situation that we find ourselves in, the only person we can look to is God. Amen. Amen. Verse 14 and 15 symbolizes the anguish of the crucifixion. Uh, look what it says here in verse 15. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. Of joint. My heart is like wax and is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like the posture and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of dirt. Amen. And so he said, this uh, symbolizes the anguish of the crucifixion. He was talking about it. Blood poured out like water. This is a death and dying experience. Christ was brought down to death, and his body was like unto Adam before God breathed into man's nostrils. And I, I, I went to, what, what, what was that? condition for Christ to be in life. Uh, it described his body, his bowels, the, 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 uh, his blood being poured out like water, his bones are out of joint. If you turn with me to Genesis 2 and chapter number 7, uh, in other words, it described man before the Holy God breathed the breath of life into man's nostril and man become a living soul. Amen. What, what was the predicament that man find himself in? Well, uh, Genesis 2 and, and uh, Genesis 2 and verse number 7. That's a highlight verse. We ought to know that verse, right? What it says here. And God and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. All right. So man was just a bunch of clay amen man didn't have no function no organs moving around he had the organs but they wasn't functioning that's what those were that's what uh verses 14 and 15 was really trying to say his organs everything was shutting down amen but then what happened in verse two uh and breathe into his nostrils what the breath of life and man became a living soul that's when man became alive when god breathed the breath of life into man and so i want to let you know uh, even when death comes for us, brothers and sisters, God is only going to take back what he gave. Amen. The clay, this old clay that we live in, this house that we live in is going to go back to Mother Earth, Mother Dust. Amen. Amen. But God is only going to claim the breath of life. Amen. Amen. So, amen. And what we do in this body determines where we spend our eternity. Uh, look at verse 16, Gentiles. Uh, were described, amen, let's go back to our lesson and we're going to hurry up real quick. I, there's a question I want to ask. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, their 
my hands and my feet. Amen. In Philippians 3 and 2, uh, Philippians 3 and 2 in the New Testament, that's just a highlight verse. Dogs, brothers and sisters, were uh, dogs were uh, a form of identification by the Jews of the, of the Gentiles when they used the term dogs. So it really wasn't offensive, but they just classified or identified the Gentile. Any non-Jewish people, they called them dogs. And even uh, and Paul in the Philippians 3 and 2, he said, Be what? Beware of dogs. Beware of the evildoers. Amen. And then Dr. B.W. Smith simply said, Watch them dogs. Amen. Amen. Unsaved folk. Uh, verses 17 and 18. If you bear with me real quick, uh, it says here, I may tell all my bones they look and stay upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And that's what Jesus was saying. He experienced that in Matthew uh, 27. That's a highlight verse, Matthew 27 and verses uh, 35 and 36 is in the book. Matthew 27 verses 35 and now David is writing all this and it, act, and it came and it comes to pass in Christ's experience on the cross. Verses 35 and 36. Look what happened here in Matthew 27. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophets. And they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Amen. So this is the same experience that. David is going to, prophetically writing about uh, uh, verses 22-21. The dog used here of the Gentiles are one person in particular. They're talking about the Pilate, the Roman governor, who had the power of life and death over Christ to save or crucify him, to be saved from the lion's mouth. Yeah, here, yeah, here, yeah, uh, Look at here with me. First Peter 5 and 8. Amen. To be saved from the lion's mouth. Uh, refers to Satan who tried to kill Christ. It was said even before he got to uh, Calvary, Christ tried to take Jesus out in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. But look what he said. Uh, the lion describes Satan. And First Peter 5 and 8. We know what it says here. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. So thus a typology of the devil as, as a lion. Amen. So he was dealing with this lion. Amen. And I'm going to hasten to a close real quick. Uh, uh, so, so, so from verses 22 to 31, it switches the scenario of the right of the other psalm. Amen. Uh, 1 through 21 talks about uh, lament and being sorrowful and seeking God and be, having a fervent prayer. But somewhere in the midst of all the writing from, from 22 on, David got a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. If you call on the Lord, you'll get your breakthrough. So from 22 to 31 switches to exaltation and to the glory of God. Amen. When you read the, the remaining of those verses. Verse 29 says, all they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. Amen. And I had to pull this one up too. That's the last reference I had. He, in verse, what did I say, 29? Yeah, okay, verse 20. Let me read that. Verse, all they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. Amen. And we ought to have, this is another highlight verse, Philippians. Amen. Chapter number two and verses nine through 11. Amen. We, we quote it. We ought to be able to find it in your Bible. Philippians 2, 5, 9 through 11. Look what it says. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should what? Bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And verse 11, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Either you're going to bow now or you're going to bow later. But one, one thing that the Bible said that we all, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Amen. I'd rather bow now and humble 
uh, submission, amen, to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look what verse two rep 22 represents. Look, uh, as we want to come to a close, your private deliverance de deserve a public praise. Let me hit that. Let me leave that with you. All that you've been through, all that the psalmist been through from verses one through 21, that was his, uh, that was his trial. Amen. That was his private issue. Sometimes people go through stuff, sickness, and don't tell nobody. They just endure it. Amen. Like a good soldier, go through financial hardships. Amen. And, and, and don't complain. Don't have a pity party with other people. You just endure it. Amen. Sometimes people got uh, marriage problems. Amen. And you know, when you got a, a spouse and you know, you can't tell everybody your business, how to treat your husband, what to do to your husband and do to your wife. You just got to figure it out yourself. You got to pray to the Lord and wait on the Lord for a breakthrough. Sometimes people go through stuff privately. Amen. But as a believer, amen. When you able to get to the sanctuary as a believer, when you're able to get around some other saints, your private deliverance ought to become a public praise. So when you read from 22 down to 31, it's a public praise, a public uh, testimony. We ought not to be ashamed of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. If the Lord's been good to you, you ought to tell it. You ought to tell it everywhere you go. You ought to share your testimony. Amen. You might not want to talk about it while you're going through, but if, if he bring you out, amen. He bought the song said, he bought me out. All right. He bought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. He bought me out. All right. He saved my soul. Amen. You ought to be able not to be ashamed to, uh, to tell somebody your private deliverance. Amen. Ought to be a, a public praise. Amen. Your, your, your private sorrows. Amen. When the Lord answer, when he come, when you get your breakthrough, tell somebody and then look at uh, verses 30 to 31. Look what it says here. Uh, a seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and, and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he has done this. And let me just give you a little commentary. Unborn generations are depending on the faithfulness of saints today to serve the Lord. If we teach our children about the Lord, then they will teach their children of children. If we want our children to serve the Lord, they must hear about him from us. Can I get a witness? How did you get connected? Somebody told you about Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, and that's how it goes. Amen. We have to recognize that we're here today because uh, God's love was shared with us. Amen. Uh, here's the question I want to ask before we close out. How effective was your grandparents? How effective was your parents in getting you introduced to know the Lord? How effective were they? And how much emphasis did they put in us knowing the Lord? Amen. You know, like I know, they made great emphasis and they were greatly affected when they, you didn't have no choice but to go to worship. You didn't have no choice, choice but to go to Sunday school because they wanted you to get this thing. They, they wanted us to know the Lord for ourselves. They knew that we were, they were leaving off the scene and that they wanted us to have this personal relationship. So this is what the, this, that verse was saying. We have to share God's love. We have to share God's goodness. We have to tell of his, his wonders, amen? And we have to go out and witness, amen, to others that they can catch hope. So the question is, how effective was your grandparents? How effective was your parents uh, making an impression in your life about who Jesus was. And then not only that, we won't stop there, but how effective are you? Let's be truthful now. How effective have you been, parents, for those of you who have children? How really effective, we were to take an examination, how much emphasis have we put uh, of God in the lives of our children or grandchildren? Are we effectively doing it? Can we do a little better? Have we done some and we stopped? Have we become discouraged and amen and don't share Christ's goodness? Or do uh, do we fail to remind our children, amen, our ch grandchildren that God is real, that God is good? As long as you have breath in your body, amen, as long as you know the Lord for yourself, 
you ought to continue. Amen. And as someone said, it don't make so no sense to want to come out to church and teach others children about the Lord and Sunday school and Bible study and you and you and you failing at home. Amen. We ought to uh, charity teaching starts at home. Now, you can't save nobody, but we can always witness. The only thing you can do is drop the seeds, amen, and pray. And then one day that they'll catch hope. Train up a child in the way that he should grow, that he grow old and he shall not. So this psalm is a typology of what David experienced, but is also prophetic of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ suffering, amen. But did he, he didn't stay in the ground. He didn't stay in the grave. He didn't stay in the tomb. But he, he rose victorious, amen? So we'll have a praise if you stay faithful. If you remain steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord, you'll know that your labor is not in vain. Sometimes we cry out, and it don't seem like God hears our cry. But you have to have faith. Hallelujah. You have to have faith. Amen. So as we close out, I'm going to open up the line tonight. Amen. And, let's, and you can answer it in either way. Have your grandparents, you're saved. You're a believer, you're a follower, you're committed. How effective was your grandparents in your life? How effective was your, your parent, your mother and father, or your aunt and uncle, or a spiritual advisor in your life? That What did they do to cause you to get committed and stay connected? We're going to answer that. And if you want to be truthful, uh, you can say how effective you have been towards your children or what areas that you feel you can work in to, to, to do better while you have breath in your body. Amen. The line is open for a few moments. Amen. Feel free to hit star six and do share with us. Hello. Hello. I'm Carol Washington. I bless you. Um, I have, I have my grandma, my grandpa, my sister, everybody. Family, but you know, you know, Pastor. I know them. Yeah, I know, you know, all of them. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's all, Pastor. You're still committed. Thank God. Thank God. Is there another? Can you name somebody? Good evening. Uh, good evening, um, disciples. This is Priscilla, and I just want to say that I am studying for my grandfather's Bible today, and many topics that come up he has already highlighted in his Bible, and I am so thankful that God gave me the opportunity to study where he already walked. Beautiful. That's great impact. already highlighted the roadmap for you to follow. God bless you. There's another Good evening, everyone. I would like to say that um, in my household growing up, they didn't talk too much about God. So my grandparents or my parents, well, but I knew that there was a God. There, you know, growing up, you had to know that there was a God. Yeah. But I want to thank God for my neighbor who introduced me to God. So when you were preaching this evening and you were saying that, you know, when you're when you're a Christian, you gotta be careful of how you walk because the community needs that more than ever. If it was not for my neighbor next door that my grandmother would let me go to church with every Sunday, you know, that's how I became to know the Lord. And um and I'm and I'm grateful for that. So it does take a village, it does take a community, you know, for us to have the great commission and show others and tell others. So that you know it's not being taught in the household somehow you get a part of that fruit and you'll know him for yourself that's right you, you made a great statement sis johnson it takes a village a community and your testimonies i've heard that from several other people that you know we all didn't grow up and say a lot of people didn't grow up in save household they grew up in who that was uh more worldly than they were spiritual but god has a way of sending people in your life, amen. And that's the job we have to do. That's what I'm trying to say. We have to keep on spreading the gospel, amen. Is there another? I I, I enjoy this. I didn't really talk so much about the Bible. I think my name is Mark Arthur. Come on, Doc Mac Arthur. I'm glad I met you people in my life. 
If it wasn't for you people, I, I don't know what I would do, but I praise God for all of them. God bless every last one of them. God bless you. God got a time set for everybody. Yeah. Yes, he does. Is there another? Thank God for those who told us told you the story. Amen. God bless your heart. Well, you thank God for that. I, I have my own testimony. I thank God for my mother, but I thank God for my grandmother. You know, those that knew her, she took me on her journey. Amen. I didn't know where I was going, but we were going to sick people homes and I seen her roll up her sleeves. I, I seen her take a little bread, a little butter. Amen. Amen. I take, seen her take a little flour, a little egg, a little butter, some milk and, and make something out of nothing. Amen. And feed the hungry. Amen. Don't you know God will bless you? They Not only did they tell you the way, but they showed you the way. Amen. And many of us, it's been installed in us. Amen. And you want to know something? When you go about doing good, when you when you go about uh, serving the Lord with gladness, it's not a strain. You know, it's not an issue or a problem. You, some, there are some people that you ask them to do something and they start sighing and making excuses and telling you, Oh, I can't do this. No, when you learn, when you love the Lord, anything, anywhere, Lord, I'm ready to serve you. Amen. So that only come by walking with people who knew the way. They showed you the way. So if we want the gospel to continue, we have to continue to spread it in our own homes. Amen. Whether they you think they're going to get it or not, you're supposed to speak it into existence. You're supposed to live it. Amen. Because they're going to follow you quick about what you do than what you say. Amen. Now, if you want to get folks saved in your family, you got to live right at, if you ever want to know if somebody really saved, go home with them. See how they act in their neighborhood. See how they act in their, amen, uh, uh, in their homes. You got a lot of people that quote scripture and sing in the choir, but they cuss like a sailor in the house. Now, how are you going to get this? <laughs> how are you going to, either salt water or fresh water got to come out one mouth. <laughs> amen. If you, that's why a lot of our children, amen. And then when we do wrong, don't be ashamed to say I messed up. Amen. Don't be ashamed to confess your faults and repent. That's the key word. And th that's all part of the project. That's all part of the process. I don't know why we going there, but if, if you want the folk to get converted, you got to be real. Amen. I don't know if somebody need to hear that tonight. Amen. You just got to be real. Tell them I messed up. I talk out of turn. God forgive me, but keep on going. Amen. Let them know God is real. He's able. Amen. We love you tonight. This psalm uh, talks about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's so prophetically written, even though David might have been experiencing it, but he was writing about what was to come years, hundreds of years down the road through future generations. Amen. He was talking about his, his son and, and not so much biologically, but the line he's genealogy amen because only uh, uh, jesus was born to a woman but god is the father amen so we thank you for joining in and i just hope that something has been said or done uh to uh encourage our hearts when you look at this song amen wait on the lord i don't care how long it takes wait on him and you want to know something he will come uh if your healing if your blessing don't come on this side I want to share something with you. Amen. It will come. Amen. I I had an experience. Amen. On Friday morning. Amen. Amen. Now I don't. I better let you know now. I, my wife visited me on Friday morning. You know what things? I won't go into detail, but she told me one thing. She said, "I am healed." Amen. You know, we may die with the cause of death be cancer on this side, but when you raise in the resurrection, the cause of your resurrection is Christ. Amen. That's I, if I don't say nothing else, she didn't say she. We had a lot of things to talk about, but she said, "I'm not sick. I'm healed." You know how that strengthened my faith. Amen. You may have laid me down there with gallbladder cancer, but on this side, that she is now, she said, "I'm healed." Amen. Amen. My cause of healing is Christ. So I want to let you know, I'd rather have Christ in my life and not need Him than to need Christ and not have Him. Amen. It pays to serve the Lord. Amen. You know, this old body is laid corruptible, incorruptible, but you're right, incorruptible. Amen. This body is laid, laid, laden with sin. But when you have Christ in your life, what can wash away our sin? 
What could make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God bless your heart. We love you this evening. Amen. And we're looking on next week to Psalms 23. Now, you can't rush the 23rd Psalm. Amen. That might have to be a two-part lesson. I think it's only six verses, but there's so much meat in those six verses. But we're going to take our time with that very familiar 23rd Psalm on next week. We're going to start out. But we're going to take our time and dissect the 23rd Psalm. So God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. If our evangelist Cooper, are you on the line with us tonight? If you saw on the line or if our chairman Deacon yeah. Brian, on the line, one of you come and uh, uh, dismiss us with a word of prayer. And brother chairman, if you're on the line, Deacon Brian, we just want you to say hello. Amen. Folk concerned about you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the man of God and teaching of your word. Yeah. Prayer in a time of suffering. Oh, my God, while we're going through, keep praying. Prayer in a time of victory. My God, tell of your deliverance. Yes. Oh, my, my, my God. Jesus died on the cross for us. He suffered, so we must suffer. And there's deliverance in our suffering. You know, God, ask you right now in the name of Jesus to cover us, God, during our travels each and every day, God, during this time of pandemic, God, uh, my COVID-19, God, cover our children, God, God, yeah. cover the ones in the hospital, God, cover the ones in the nursing home, God, we'll cover everyone, God, cover them with the blood of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, we need you right now more than ever, God. But, oh, God, we know, my God, man thinks that he is in control. But, oh, God, we know that you are your father. You are, you are continuing to do You are in control. You are in control. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Are we closing now? But the song says, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus is his name. Savior, 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 Savior. Jesus is his name. Let's close out. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you tonight. Heaven smile upon you. Jesus is his name. Jesus. Good night. Good night. God bless you, Doctor. I heard you. You're being with Rachel. Good night. 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 Good night.